Her attributes, uh, she is a maiden. You usually see her, as we have on our parish website, holding or carrying uh, roses and apples. Uh, she is depicted by stars and she kneels before the executioner. St. Dorothy um, is a fourth virgin, fourth century virgin mother who was executed uh, because she would not give up her faith nor her virginity. According to legend, what happened was at that time you were killed if you were a Christian or a follower of Christ. And uh, she, her family gave up the faith. She would not give up the faith. They brought her her two sisters while they had her in prison to try to talk her out of the faith. And what she did instead was talk the girls back into the faith, <laughs> which did not please the king or whatever the head poncho was at that time. So they first tried to boil her in oil. Uh, they put her upside down and like, you know, dipped her in, you know, like they were doing the French fry or something. And according to the legend, it was as if she went to one of the spas around today and just had an oil treat and didn't face her whatsoever. So um, the king or whatever the emperor said at that time that, okay, well, we've got to go to the hottest stuff. So we're going to cut off her head. That figured that would work. So there was this gentleman, and we often we hear about him in Paul's writings, uh, Theophilus. You probably remember that name from some Greek. Well, that's the same Theophilus. Uh, he was a lawyer at the time, and he was mocking her. They were getting ready to chop her head off. And basically, it didn't face her, and she said uh, that she would pray for him. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposedly, this was the winter time, and the, uh, the vegetation and whatnot wasn't happening. So the author said, yeah, send me some apples and send me a flower from wherever you're going to end up. Well, again, the legend says that upon her death, just before her death, a little boy appeared with a platter with three apples and three roses. And she said, no, not for me. So give it to Theophilus. So the little kid goes up, you know, her head gets chopped. Uh, the kid goes up to Theophilus, and Theophilus was converted. And he ended up losing his head as well at the time because the king said, well, you, you converted, give up the faith. And he said, no. So his head went off. So you can see how Dorothy is known for that. She is the patroness of, Anthony will love this, uh, gardeners, uh, what do you call tree? Horticulturalist, all that, all that as well. So she was named uh, for that. Um, let's see what else I need to tell you. The oil didn't work because they didn't use extra virgin. Jump for the white man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. We all better. I don't think you're always going to beat that. But, uh, <laughs> so in today's liturgy, at the offertory time, uh, Father Gordon uh, will have, we're going to bring up symbolic and an apple and a rose uh, to offer up uh, to St. Dorothy, with the, to Jesus, to St. Dorothy. He has a little prayer to say for that. And then at the end of the Mass, so that you can continue on the celebration at home in remembrance of our patron saint. Everybody gets a rose and an apple. And, an rose. Oh, okay. 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 and uh, so we have that. So that that will be a little simple celebration of our patroness of St. Dorothy. He's just saying that happy Valentine's Day. Speaking of which, at the end, this is also uh, National 
marriage week or something like that. At the end of Mass, I'm going to ask you if we could say the prayer of St. Uh, Dorothy after uh, each week of the flower and apple, and then the prayer for National Marriage Week. The United States Catholic Conference, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops has uh, declared this week Marriage Week and Love Week, you know, all of that because of Valentine's Day. However, with a caveat, it is only for a traditional marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and so the prayer that I have offered to say is for all marriages. This is from Gene um, Chilton and all of that. that group. I was going to say something at the end of that, but since he brought it up, I'll say it now. One of the things we're always so people look for is the good old days and the Catholic bishops and the Catholic Church <coughs> are looking for the good old days but like I told you marriage is whatever society and the state says it is so one time there was polygamy and the warrants actually wanted to marry that but the laws were against them so we don't have it in the United States. So marriage is whatever we would like it to be. And in these days, when they keep talking about traditional marriage, it could be a lot of different things. Traditional marriage could be marrying because you want to inherit property. That was one time we used to have traditional marriage. And now we do it here because of love. But in many countries throughout the world, it is not because of love, but because of family relationships. So that's why I keep that in mind, and also that's why we should be able to practice what Jesus said, which is fidelity, commitment, and love. And people who love one another, like two men or two women, should be able to be able to get married and have those benefits and people who love one another and have not exactly celebrated marriage yet even whatever they are men or women or men and women they should be able to also have some sort of equality as well and hopefully we will move in that direction in the future I thought I better share that with you because we're going to hear about this today is national marriage day in the Catholic Church, but like Father Jim said, it's what considered traditional, but traditional is made up of whatever the people want it to be, and we need to keep that in mind when we think about this. Mm -hmm. Our opening hand will be number 310.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Jesus, the light of the world, gathers us together. May our faces reflect His light. And may He always be with you. And also with you. What is striking in today's message is how much trust Christ puts in us. Perhaps more than we do in Him. He entrusts to us the mission of being His light, shining in the world. The salt that preserves and spices the world with the aroma of the gospel. The mission of being a city of light that attracts people to the Lord. What a responsibility. Today, let us ask Jesus to kindle his light in us through the intercession of our patron, St. Dorothy. How little the light of Christ has shown in us, let us seek the Lord's pardon. Lord Jesus, you are the true light that enlightens all people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, you said of yourself, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will have light of life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you tell us, you are the light of the world. Your light must shine in people's sight. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, let the light of your mercy take away from us the darkness of sin. Give us the light of life and lead us to everlasting life. <laughs> and now let us share with each other the sign. <laughs>
Now let's join together and sing the glory. Sing and sing. Sing the
Loving Father, we are important to you, for you keep entrusting to us the mission of making your name and your love known. Strengthen us in our weakness. Make us savor the message of the gospel, that in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus, we may bring your light and taste to the world and carry out this task with great joy, as did St. Dorothy in her desire never to stray from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading this morning is from the Hebrew prophet Isaiah. Share your bread with those who are hungry, and shelter homeless poor people. Clothe those who are naked. And do not hide from the needs of your own flesh and blood. Then your light will shine like the dawn, and your wound will be quickly healed over. Your integrity will go before you, and the glory of your God behind you. Cry, and God will answer. Call, and God will say, I am here. Provided you remove from your midst oppression, finger pointing, and vicious rumors. If you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light will rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom will become for you like the midday sun. This is the word of our God.
is the word of our God. Oh, well, thanks. 
uh, I, I've got a hold on my emotions. Uh, right? It's a, it's a lot more difficult for that personal light to shine out in situations like that. But that's where the light needs to shine from. St. Dorothy is just kind of the city on top of the hill with the press <laughs> lately. Getting a lot of it. But each of us, in our own walks, as we talked a couple weeks ago, some of us have an LED, some of us have a candle. We're getting into a lot of light stuff here. Candlemas last week, and lots of candles. Yeah, yeah. And coming out of winter, isn't that nice? It's pretty dreary this week. But our personal light, does your light glow? Maybe it's more like a night light, but is it still glowing? Does it come out and speak to those around you? Can they tell there's a difference in your life? And if they said, gosh, what's different about you? Would you actually have the opportunity and be able to say, oh, it's, you know, my faith. Not that hot grande, two pumps mocha, half cap, no pump. <laughs> That's what the boss wants me to say. And, it, and it, it's difficult, you know, to say things to folks around us when they ask us. Hopefully they're asking us. If they're not asking us, where our joy comes from, why we're so bubbly, why we're so even-tempered. Well, not always. <laughs> <laughs> but how we recover so well. You know, then we need to be asking ourselves, what are we doing? What are we doing? Because the only, only, only way that really makes a big difference is that one-on-one -on -one connection between you and someone else. We can put all the articles we want in the newspaper. We could put up the biggest banners you wanted. We could be on television and all over the internet. And yeah, that would get some folks in, but what makes the difference? What made you stay here? Not just St. Dorothy's, but what makes you believe that Christianity is the faith for you? A personal experience, I would dare say. And people don't get to that personal experience without having a one-on-one, -on -one, usually. So we are that light. We are an expression of that good news every day. Some days better than others. Hey, we're human. But indeed, do we go out? Do we touch people? This community has some, some big questions facing it. And as I alluded to a couple weeks ago, I visited many communities <coughs> who are struggling with questions about how to reach out to the community, about how to touch people. So where this community is going is a big question. Where this country is going is a big question. Where humankind is going is a big question. But each of those questions must first be answered here, in your heart, for yourself. So as we go forward and as we go around and along with our business, it's my prayer that we look at and listen to God's light, God's message, and that in some small way, we thank God for the ability to share that with others.
is our custom. <laughs> we listen to the word. I said, my thoughts. Yeah. I think Hunter has something to yeah. <laughs> Those kind of punctuation do well. <laughs> but now it's your turn. Do you have further thoughts and maybe something else about the scripture in touch to you? Or? Okay. Okay. I can honestly say there's a very good reason why I keep coming back. My daughter threatened my wife if I didn't. <laughs> That's not quite literal. But no, I've gone to an independent Catholic church in the north after having not gone to any church for 34 years due to a divorce. And um, when I moved down here, I really felt lost and I kept getting more and more depressed and I finally found St. Dorothy's and my daughter made the comment that just going once what a difference it made in me. And she said, you're not going to stop going. I don't know what I have to do to get you there. <laughs> so as I said, I had been threatened mm-hmm. and it really didn't matter if I got threatened or not because I know if I have to miss because I know I'm not here or whatever reason. I really can tell the difference in the way I feel. Sandy? Um, when uh, someone said that Hunter had something to say, (laughs) it reminded me of um, a couple of uh, people that I've been listening to last couple of days, my, my niece is a life coach, and she's sponsoring this, a series, a video series. Uh, by the way, it's called WWW. <laughs> oh, that's a great series. And one of the things that really, really hit me was they were talking about, you know, it's always well, how are you going to create yourself so that you can share with others and this? But they talked about going back to the time of our innocence and the time of when we were that child and what are the things that just made us really? What is the thing? And that whole concept of going back to that time when there was that innocence and there was that joy and that that's what really we are about but along the way, we go through phases where we get hardened, our heart gets broken, and we have to go through a whole phase in order to come back to the point where we are receiving again and being back at that innocent, out of control stage. <laughs> it's, 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 for me, that was hugely powerful because when they're talking about going back to the things you really love to do, and they said, that's still you. That really is the pieces, and it, it hit me going back to things you know, that I did as a, a young person. It's true. So I think Hunter is uh, probably our answer. He's <laughs> 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 just the best. <laughs> The only needs to remember that when he's 16. He only needs to remember that when he's 16. In your books, there should be a piece of paper from last week that is our St. Dorothy. You might have to find it somewhere in the I promise you.
to see what is good. 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 Good.
and a vision of how they are to minister to their communities going forward. Lord, let us pray. Lord, let us pray. For all married couples and for equality in marriage to come to our country, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions that are listed on our parish website, and for all the intentions that you hold within the silence of your hearts, we pray. Lord God, we pray that your light may shine on all the earth. However limited we are, that our words and actions reflect the light of your love. In the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. Our God and Father, your Son Jesus gives himself to us in these signs of bread and wine as our tasty food and our drink of joy. By the power that is in him, help us to bear witness that life is meaningful and worth living. Make us people for others with Jesus, that our sense of justice and sharing may give a taste for life and love to those around us, that they may see that your Son is here with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. Bring them and all who departed into the light of your presence. 
Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, St. Dorothy, and all the angels and saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and love. Do not consider what we truly deserve, but give us all forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May our love be like salt that makes life tasty and worthwhile. May our Christian living be a light to those who live in darkness. May our Christian communities be cities of light to be seen from afar as signs that God lives and works in his people. And may God bless you all for this mission, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now, the Mass is never ended. Let the light of Christ shine on all those who live around you and all those who you encounter out of the air. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> Our closing hymn for today's celebration will be number 632. <laughs>